Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Slam Jam season once again, as today we're going to look back at Space Jam A New Legacy, released just last year in 2021. Released 25 years after the original, Space Jam 2 or Space Jam A New Legacy is a standalone sequel to the original film. The first Space Jam had the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, so naturally this one gets the second greatest basketball player of all time, LeBron James, as the new star. This film has technically been in development since 1996, as originally they wanted to make another film with Michael Jordan. Jordan was not at all interested though, so they shelved the project until 2014, when LeBron James signed on. And then they didn't end up filming it until 2019, and finally released it in the middle of 2021. So what's this one about? Well, LeBron James is kind of an asshole dad and is pressuring his kids to play basketball, but then, after he insults an algorithm named Algae Rhythm, get it? That's funny, isn't it? Played by Don Cheadle, he gets sucked into the algorithm where he has to play against Algae, forming his own basketball team with the Looney Tunes. And if he doesn't beat Algae and the brand new Goon Squad, he has to stay in the algorithm forever. This film was originally released in theaters and simultaneously on HBO Max, and it grossed $162 million worldwide, however, to only a $150 million budget, making it a box office failure, although I'm sure they'll blame that on HBO Max, even though it was only out on HBO Max for the first month. I'm sure they won't at all blame the fact that LeBron James is a crap actor, and the film itself was just badly scripted. And yes, LeBron James is not an actor, he's a basketball player, but neither was Michael Jordan, and he was decent, so that's all I'm saying. This film also had excessive product placement and also utilized Warner Brothers' entire library of characters. And I mean their entire library. But just how inferior was this inferior sequel? Well, we're gonna find out right now as we take a look back at Space Jam A New Legacy, released in 2021. So our film begins in the exact same way the original did, with a flashback to our main character's childhood. In the year 1998, 14-year-old LeBron James shows up for a youth basketball game. He gets distracted though after his friend Malik gives him a fancy new Game Boy, and he misses the game-winning shot. His coach, Coach C, gives him this lecture about how video games are evil and he needs to focus on basketball, and LeBron takes that to heart and throws the brand new Game Boy away. What the fuck? And then again, much like the first film, we get LeBron James' career highlights up to that point. It's now present day in 2021, and at LeBron's massive mansion, we meet his sons, Darius and Dominic. Darius is practicing basketball while Dom isn't too interested. In fact, Dom made himself his own video game. He's only 12 and he made a video game. Kid's a goddamn genius. LeBron James, however, who has grown up to be a giant asshole, doesn't care about video games or what his son wants. He just wants him to play basketball. I don't know if the whole point at the beginning of this film was to make LeBron look like an asshole human being and an overbearing father, but if that was the point, congratulations. You succeeded. Meanwhile, we go inside Warner Brothers Studio. No, we need to go deeper, inside Warner Brothers Studio's Serververse, where we meet the algorithm of the Serververse, Algae Rhythm, get it? Algae wants to bring Warner Brothers films to the next level, and he wants LeBron James to be the man who does that. Back at LeBron's house, Dom shows him the video game he made, which is a basketball game where there's no traditional rules and you can use cool stuff like power-ups. However, after Dom executes LeBron's signature crossover move in the game, his character glitches and deletes himself. LeBron is a way to cheer him up, though, as LeBron, Dom, Darius, and LeBron's childhood friend Malik, who's his manager now, I guess, go to Warner Brothers to see the presentation from LG. Basically, using the new Warner 3000 software, they want to cut a film deal with LeBron, where they put him in all kinds of different projects, including Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. LeBron thinks that's one of the top five worst ideas he's ever heard, though. He's just a major asshole about it, and he even calls Algy broken, who doesn't take that very well. Dom then starts talking to one of the Warner Brothers execs about video games and how he's going to go to E3 next week, but LeBron's like, no, Dom, you're not going to E3. Basketball camp is next week, and Dom's like, man, fuck you, dad. Dom's basic problem is that LeBron tries to control his entire life and just doesn't let him be him, which, yeah, it's a solid argument. The elevator they got on, though, leads Dom and LeBron down into the Warner 3000 server room, where they're both sucked into the algorithm. They meet Al G, who suddenly makes Dom disappear, and tells LeBron that if he wants him back, he's gonna have to win a basketball game, because of course. The rules are quite simple. Basically, if LeBron wins, him and Dom get to go three. If he doesn't, they're trapped there with Al G forever. And so he can start forming his team, Al G sends LeBron to the Toon World. 
The Toon world is completely abandoned, however, except for one Toon, Bugs Bunny. Bugs explains to LeBron that the other Toons left after Algae convinced them that they'd be better off in other universes, and only Bugs stayed behind because this is his home. LeBron needs to go start forming his team, however, and in order to do that, he needs some transportation to get to the other worlds. Bugs arranges that by baiting Marvin the Martian to Toon World and then jacking his spaceship. Meanwhile, Al G, who's now dressed as Steve Jobs, is hanging out with Dom and doing some grade A gaslighting. He puts on heavy to Dom that his dad doesn't believe in him, and even promises to fix Dom's game himself. Back on the spaceship, LeBron is thinking up a big new team, including the Iron Giant and Superman, but Bugs has a different squad in mind. They end up in DC World where they're dressed as Batman and Robin, and they meet Superman. Wait, that's not Superman, that's Daffy and his cameraman Porky Pig. There's a train headed towards the orphanage, and they're able to stop it at the last second, except they didn't, the actual Superman did, alongside the real Justice League, who are pissed, so Daffy and Porky agree to come along. They then go about recruiting and get Roadrunner and Wily e. Coyote from Mad Max Fury Road, which is fucking hilarious. They also get Sylvester and Elmer Fudd from the Austin Powers universe. And then Taz gets dropped on them by Rick and Morty, because what the fuck is going on in this movie? They then also find Speedy Gonzales and Granny hanging out in the Matrix universe. And the final piece of the puzzle is Lola, who they find in the Wonder Woman universe. Lola's not interested as she's completing training to be an Amazon, but then LeBron and Bugs accidentally fall into a lava pit, and Lola has to fail her training to save them. However, Wonder Woman is impressed by her sacrifice, and allows her to become an Amazon, and then tells her to go with her friends. Well, the Toon Squad's all now back together, but looks like another squad's about to be formed as well. Algy and Dom are playing Dom's video game, and Dom reveals to Algy that he scanned four basketball players into the video game. WNB players Agile Wilson and Sue Bird, and also NBA players Clay Thompson and Anthony Davis. With this information, Algy knows that he can make some major upgrades. Back on the spaceship, LeBron tries to reteach the Toons basketball using basic fundamentals, but they don't seem to grasp that very well. Going back to Dom and Algy, Algy wants to upgrade Dom as well, but Dom is not so sure. Algy then gaslights slash motivates Dom into doing it, and Algy maxes out his stats. Dom also makes some modifications to the other basketball players, combining them with some animals that he also had scanned into the game. Meanwhile, back in the real world, Malik, Darius, and LeBron's wife, Kimaya, have noticed that LeBron and Dom are missing. They then get an alert on their phone, however, advertising a basketball matchup between LeBron and Dom. Arriving back at Toon World, LeBron is adamant that they use fundamentals instead of Toon stuff, and him and Bugs begin to clash. No time for that, however, as the game is now about to start. Al G shows up and decides to do some more upgrades, and turns LeBron back into normal, and makes the Toons into higher animated versions of themselves, which I hate. Al G also decides that we need some spectators, so he calls upon the entire fucking Warner Brothers media library. He also wants some human spectators as well, so everybody who got pinged on their phone and clicked the link about the basketball game gets abducted into the algorithm, including LeBron's family. Al G then decides to cheat and up the stakes, telling all the people abducted that they only get to leave if the Toon Squad wins. Al G then introduces the new Goon Squad, which are those basketball player slash animal mixes, and the star player Dom. And then about 69, nice, minutes into this movie, the basketball game finally begins. LeBron then quickly learns that they're not playing a normal game of basketball, as they're literally inside Dom's game, and they are playing video game rules. LeBron and the Toons try their best, but basic fundamentals don't really work here, and they're down over a thousand points going into half. And to make matters worse, the Goon Squad has a secret weapon based off NBA player Damian Lillard, who can literally slow down and pause time. The Toon Squad are dejected at halftime, but never fear, because Sylvester has found Michael Jordan! Michael B. Jordan! Which is legitimately the funniest moment of this whole film. The Toons and LeBron then begin to clash, and Lay Dumbass finally gets it through his head that they can't use basic fundamentals, so he decides to do it Bugs' way. And they get Super Toonie, which includes a rap battle, a multiplier machine, Granny stopping Dame time, and LeBron finally utilizing power-ups. And for all that, they somehow take a one-point lead. Al G is understandably pissed and yells at Dom to get his head in the game. 
However, as he's squaring off with LeBron, LeBron, about 90 minutes into this movie, finally decides to be a good father, and they have a moment and embrace in the middle of the court. Dom then turns his back on Algy and decides to join the Toon Squad, which, even under Toon rules, I'm pretty sure is fucking illegal, but who cares? Algy then decides, alright, fuck it, I'll do it myself, and he upgrades himself and puts himself in the game. He says it's his game now, and he means it, as he's utilizing cheats to reverse Lola's bucket and dunk all over LeBron's head. Well, there's no way to win now with him cheating, but Dom realizes a way, the step back move, which would cause a glitch. And if the game glitches, he can't control it, but then Dom's like, wait a minute, we can't do that, because if that happens, the character that does the move will get deleted. LeBron volunteers to do it, though, as he doesn't believe in video games, and he's sure he'll be fine. As Lola's trying to inbound it to LeBron, though, Bugs picks it off and executes the move himself, throwing the ball up for LeBron. LeBron uses a power-up to try to dunk it, but Algy's trying to stop him and he's not gonna make it. Luckily, Dom just throws him another power-up, and then he does make it, and the Toon Squad win. And as a result of this, Algy and the Toon Squad are deleted from the algorithm. I'm not sure how that makes sense when Algy literally is the algorithm, but whatever. The captive audience then gets to return home, and everyone's happy, except for Bugs, who is literally about to die. LeBron and Dom then get taken back to the real world as well, and after they leave, Bugs disappears as well. We now time jump to one week later, where Dom wants to play basketball now and not do video games, and they're going to basketball camp, except just kidding, LeBron never cares what you want. He's taking you to E3 now, even though it's what you, you want to do basketball now, not video games, but LeBron's like, nope, you're going to E3, brother. So he takes him to E3, and then all Bugs shows up. He's not dead, what a shocker, and Bugs is like, hey, I'm here in the real world, can I crash with you? And LeBron's like, yeah, sure. He's like, oh, by the way, we're all going to crash with you. All the tunes. And that's how the film ends, with LeBron stuck with the curse of being haunted by cartoon characters forever. So before we get to the obvious bad, let's get to the one good thing about this movie, and that's the animation and visual effects. They looked beautiful. The animation was great. Again, uh, the large variety of Warner Brothers properties was cool in the movie as well. By the way, they used 4V Animation uh, ILM. This is the second collaboration with Looney Tunes and ILM. The only other one was Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which makes sense to why it looks so good. Also, the voice acting for the tunes was really good. Zendaya as Lola Bunny was fine. Gabriel Iglesias did a good job as Speedy Gonzales. And then, of course, Jeff Bergman did good as everyone else. As far as the bad, well, pretty much everything else, to be honest. But let's start with LeBron James. Now, again, it's understandable not to expect anything out of LeBron James' acting performance because, again, he's a basketball player. But again, so was Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan's acting was pretty fucking decent. LeBron's was not decent. It was not even halfway decent. It was pretty bad. Hell, during that scene near the end where he's trying to be a dad and has an emotional moment with Dom, he's trying to cry. And, like, it's... It's so bad. Like, it's so... He's trying to cry and be emotional. And it's like, it just doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And... Uh, man, it, I mean... Yeah, it, 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 he just didn't work for this. I understand why they casted him. It had to be him, you know, because he's the biggest basketball player in the world now, you know, as Michael Jordan was then. It couldn't be anybody else but him, except maybe Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. But yeah, it just, he doesn't work as an actor. And on top of that, his character wasn't good either. They just made him seem like an asshole controlling father. And I'm not, again, if that's the way he was supposed to come off, why? I mean, I wouldn't imagine wanting to make myself look bad that way. I mean, hell, in the original Space Jam, you know, the, the original Space Jam was arguably a bit self-deprecating to Michael Jordan. Like, sure, they sucked him off with the montage and all that, but I mean, he's Michael Jordan. They even went in on Space Jam 1 about how Michael Jordan it was not good at baseball. They acknowledged that. He acknowledged that. And he wasn't good at baseball. 
that was self-deprecating in that sense, but there was nothing self-deprecating here. It was just one big suck fest for LeBron James. Don Cheadle did his best though. I really hope he got paid well for this. And maybe this film could have needed a celebrity character to help bring it home a little bit like Bill Murray did for the first film, but there was really none of that here. And if you're wondering if I'm going to talk about Lola's redesign, about how they took her tits away, I'm not because I don't really care about that because I'm not attracted to a cartoon rabbit. And I will restate the same thing I stated in my original Space Jam review. If you were attracted to a cartoon rabbit, well congratulations, you're a furry. I'm not. But ultimately they were probably just better off not making this. I mean after Jordan backed out of the sequel, that should have been it. I understand why they did it, but it didn't even make that much money. It, it didn't make any money, to be honest with you. Again, $150 million budget, it made 162. It made nothing. So, ultimately, this movie was just a mistake. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but this was actually a Channel Points request, because why would I watch this on my own accord, by Captain, who actually requested this sometime last year, but I wanted to wait until the movie was out of theaters before doing a review on it. So thank you, I guess, Captain, for making me watch this trash. But that's going to do it for my second and probably last Space Jam look back, as I doubt they'll ever make a third one, at least I hope to God they don't. That's going to do it for my look back at Space Jam A New Legacy. Join me next Sunday on the channel as we look at The Wizard. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the description down below. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and my channel. I appreciate you guys. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Space Jam A New Legacy, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.